We're back with the ongoing battle. Monarch Butterfly versus Extinction. The Pleasant Valley Historic Cemetery. Look at this turnout. Can we make a difference? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, helping, helping to do plant, yeah. plantation right now to help the butterfly to come. That's right. During the okay. winter, yeah. One more time for you. What's uh, your name and where are you here? My name is Ganeshan. I am uh, helping to plant the, I mean, uh, to uh, conserve the, the But it's indigenous, I, I believe is the word. Yeah. Sorry? Indigenous? Uh, indigenous yeah, plants to the yeah, habitat. Indigenous, yeah, indigenous plant to... <laughs> I just learned how to say it. Oh. <laughs> Can you believe all of AMPM is here today? This is incredible. I've, it's been a year since this has happened. No, it's, it's a historic. Oh man, it's great. It's a historic day and it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Right on. Mr. Garcia, you all know. in English. My name is Isa Whalen Smuwich. I'm um, from Coastal Band of the Chumash Nation, but right now we're representing uh, Wishtoil here, um, just keeping a lookout, making sure um, that everything's kosher. Um, no, there's nothing here to be found, and nothing is found um, in this planting project for the monarch butterfly. And we're really happy to be here and, and interested in learning more about the butterfly. I didn't know it was a was it called? It's a pollinator. 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 And, and I, they I, believe it carries you into the next life. Oh. Well, yeah, very, very spiritual oh, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For us, it's, it's not the monarch, it's it's uh, the condor. But anyway, so yeah, so everybody has their own beliefs. Anyway, exactly. So, exactly. Uh, it's, it's beautiful out here. A lot of wonderful, wonderful people are out here doing awesome. volunteer work. And um, we really are glad we were able to come out here. And. Um, Surgical. We're glad to have you, and if I find an Indian head, you'll be the first person I let know. <laughs> All right, here you go. You, you next. Haku Haku. Uh, my name is Sergio Valenzuela. Um, I'm also Chumash. This is my aunt right here. Uh, but I also am Purepecha from Michoacan. So it's like, for me, knowing, not knowing about what was going on here, but now knowing, it's like, you guess you can say, connections bring you together, you know, so... As my aunt said, like we're here just to make sure that nothing's being disturbed and everything's being respected. And um, you know, it's amazing all the work that you guys are doing here. You know, it's amazing. And uh, thank you. Thankful. Yeah, very thankful. Daniel and um, I'm from the Moore Park Community College and we're doing a group project here helping with the environment and for the monarchs. You guys are awesome. My name is Wesley and I'm also part of the Moore Park College. Uh, <laughs> we're helping out with the RCD today. Sweet. Hi, my name's Shelly and I just love monarchs. I tried to raise some at home and they're just gorgeous. Love them. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you for what right. you're doing. She's working really well. Hi, my name is Chantal.
Hotel Tapia and I'm here to help restore any habitats that I can for the monarch butterflies because I think that they're really important, especially here because I've seen them traveling a lot in previous years in front of my house, but I haven't like recently last year. So I was really sad about that and when I heard that I could volunteer here to help them stay, then I thought that it'd be really important. That is so awesome. Thank you. Fish Bye. I'm a John. I'm a new resident to Ventura County, actually. Welcome. And I just want to get involved with uh, biodiversity and fixing the world. Thank it's you, sir. Stop. Thank you for everything you're doing. I'm Jesse. I'm here to save the monarchs. And I'm uh, pursuing the medical field, but I thought this was really important, and I know that this is going to make a huge difference in the end. That's awesome. Plenty of vitamin D, huh? Yeah. Thanks, dude. Did you uh, see? My name's Gina, and we're just working on this monarch project. Uh, it's my first day in this project, so it's oh, all kind so of I'm awesome. learning as we go. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know about the project and okay. somewhat, but you know, as far as the logistics of today. We are pretty doing a pretty good job of yeah, informing, exactly. huh? Aren't we? Exactly. Well, I'm just shoving it down your guys' throat today. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. Our right. name is uh, Brian Steinberg. We're from Thousand Oaks. I got both my kids here today with us. We're just helping out where we can with. Uh, with the plants and helping for uh, my butterfly growth. God bless you. I mean, it's yeah. a lot of years in the making, and it's so good to see you guys yeah. here. It really is, man. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Okay, thank you. Yeah. My name's Luke Shepard, and I'm here planting, planting plants for the monarchs in uh, the graveyard. And That's so awesome, fun. man. I, you know what? We appreciate your help 100%. Who are you with today? Uh, family or just by yourself? Uh, with my, my friends or my... Well, here he comes. My girlfriend. Oh, cool. Let's get them over here. Let me interview him. Uh, over there. How about this guy? Who are you and why are you here? I'm Jacob Tobias. Um, I'm part of a school project at Moore Park, and we decided to help with the restoration for the monarch butterflies. And I just found out about this. They're raising money for RCD to help this organ to help this whole project. That's incredible. Hi, I'm uh, uh, Miriam uh, Greenberg and this is my daughter Sarah. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm here because I love nature and I like uh, butterflies. I enjoy like three years ago that there was like this big migration you know through all the valleys so I'm hoping to see it again. Okay thank you and your name? I'm Sarah Greenberg. I want to help my mom out and then also hopefully see some butterflies and I'm also here with my boyfriend. Come back for the festival, it's really cool. We will. All right, thank you. Andy, everybody give Andy a big applause, please. Thank you so much. And David Doctor is doing our uh, video and he is documenting this for us. So this going up next door over here. I talked about this last time, so for those who are here, sorry that I'm repeating information, but there's a development going up over there and they're taking about half of these trees out. Um, you know, half of the windrow out, uh, maybe about a third or so. And it's unfortunate, uh, but we gotta understand that there is a relationship between developers and conservation, right? Um, you can't say no to development because we all need it. We know there's a housing crisis in the country, so it's important. And even more importantly, to low income, uh, development for farm workers around here and that's very important to have unfortunately it's going to be put here but it needs to be here it needs to be somewhere right so the idea is to look at the silver lining behind it and understand that you know there's probably some benefits to it such as we now have a whole group of people probably about a hundred people over there that might be monarch enthusiasts by the end by the time they move in right they're going to understand that there's a site next to them I'm gonna outreach that developer, I've already talked with them, and try to get them to plant some nectar and pollinator resources over there so they can enhance the site also, give them a little good PR. On top of that, so, you know, and of course we're gonna have some informational plaques and everything going on, but we're very connected to this site. But it's just, I wanna highlight the importance that you can't just say no to development. You know, they're not always the bad person at the end. They're not just the bad party at the end of the day. We gotta work with them and find a way to coexist in the same role because they got to do landscaping and that can really help our efforts you know if we educate them on the right type of landscaping so that is why we're here today we're trying to restore the area 
you'll see the eucalyptus over there that we planted. That's going to be a new windbreak, basically, because those half of those trees are coming down. So that's why those are going up. You then notice we planted a lot of five gallons today, right? The five gallons were planted because we're trying to create the windbreaks first on the outside, and then next time we'll be bringing in the smaller plants, the nectar and pollinator resources. So we're trying to create that windbreak so when they're here over winter, they're protected, right? They're protected from predation, from the environmental factors. So that's kind of what you're doing here today. And again, we really appreciate it. We couldn't do it without all of your help. And as we know, the monarchs are critically low. It's, I guess, a quasi-extinction rate. There's 1,900, I think, spotted throughout the, the state this year. 1,900 individuals were counted. So that's down from tremendous, tremendously down, you know? And that, that's what we're going after. So it's a much larger effort this is a part of. This is part of, you know, there's statewide efforts, there's county, uh, countrywide efforts to restore the population going on right now. You know, so I have one of my partners here, Mary, with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. She's one of the funders of this site. You know, they're, they, so who's funded this is United States Fish and Wildlife Service. So Mary's here. The California Association of Resource Conservation Districts. They funded it. And also the California Wildlife Conservation Board has funded it. The reason I'm telling you about the funders is most people don't realize their tax dollars really go to good work. They don't understand all the time especially California, there's a high priority to get environmental issues handled and fixed. And your, do your tax dollars are at work today. You know, they bought these plants at the end of the day. You're seeing it happen. So there is a need on the bigger, on the bigger level. Stuff is happening just slowly. You know, maybe a little, little too late, but we're trying to make a difference. But it's just, it's a bigger effort going on. So there's a regional group that work with this. And we also have a habitat management plan. So you're probably wondering why are we planting these plants in a certain way? You know, I already talked about the windbreak, the environmental factor, but we create very detailed habitat management plans. So they're about a 10 year guiding document. And what they do is they outline, they, they first look, oh, sorry guys, I wasn't expecting a drone there. They first, uh, they assess the site, right? They, re they do an inventory. They then do some really cool analysis with uh, photography and they look at how light enters the site. Because remember I told you monarchs like to cluster in the trees, right? So they go in, they shoot something up in like one of these cathedral. They have a fisheye lens that shoots up, analyzes how light comes in. And they also can look at something called LIDAR, which is basically lasers that come down. And it analyzes how light enters the canopy from above. So they look at that, they look at canopy density, they look at tree health. And they look at resources on site. Like I said, they inventory it. And then, you know, we work together. We decide what we want to do out here. And it's a 10 year document. And that's how we go. So every tree, every plant was pre decided to go in that location. There's a reason behind it. And we're going to be connected to the site for a very long time. You know, even though it's a 10 year guiding document, you know, we expect more and more to happen. So this site is a kind of a community center of sorts. It's, think of it as an outdoor community center. And that's, that's one of my goals is to create more of stuff like this. So communities can get together. It's a graveyard. Most people don't think that this would be a good spot. But as you can tell, you know, as long as you got some music, you got a good thing going, and it's a fun time to be at, you know? And so what they're trying to do here is ultimately to make this a green cemetery where they want to do natural burials, which is pretty cool. So you can plant a tree and you can have your loved one below that tree. Um, and they host the Monarch Festival here every year. They didn't do it last year. But it's going to be coming, a, it's a really community driven effort. And we've gotten cash uh, donations that we're going to 100% go straight back into the um, our CD. We're going to donate it right back. So if you have any donations, we have flyers. We have flyers that have a PayPal link. We, if you want to give us c cash, we accept cash too. Anything works, and even $1 is great. Um, it'll all go right back in RCD, 100% of it, and yeah, so thank you very much, and uh, let's get to it. So I didn't get into the specifics about the, the larger effort. She was asking if this is going to go on a database. So it is. So there's a society, uh, it's called Xerxes Society. Some of you may know them, probably heard them. They're really popular in this realm. Well, they're really popular in a lot of realms. But yeah, they keep track of this. So there's also, uh, 
what is it? Milkweed tracker? No, Monarch Watch, too. Um, and then there's one where you can snap the photo of the monarchs. Milkweed Monarch map, Milkweed Mapper. So, good question. So, Milkweed Mapper is a free app. It's also, it's a national one. When you see a monarch, you can take a photo and you can upload it. When you see milkweed, you can take a photo and you can upload it. And it goes to Citizen Scientist database. And it actually tracks all the sightings throughout the state and throughout the country. So download that app if you really want it, because that's how we know about counts, too. Speaking of counts, every year we're going to be doing counts here in winter. So I encourage anyone that wants to learn how to come out. And I have three other restorations we're doing. So whoever wants to come out from November to February, we do uh, monthly counts. So I can teach you how to count a cluster of monarchs. I can't promise there's going to be a cluster here next year, but... And I can teach, you know, teach you how to cite flying ones and everything, but it's every year, and that's how we get our counts yearly, right? That's how we know that they're on a quasi-extinction rate, because of volunteers like you spending your Saturdays or Sundays or whatever going to do a count. But if you're interested in that, I'll be sending out emails later this year for sign-ups. It's very, very popular, so be sure to jump on that. These restorations are very popular, too. Yeah, that's the gophers. Cave in. What's that? Where do you want to unload the plants? Hang on a minute. Oh, they love these. I tell you, they grab right on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yesterday I had one fly away. Uh huh. And just circled around and came right back. <laughs> oh, that's funny. One of them is pretty immature, so may not be hungry just yet. This is a gift from God. Look at that beautiful tree here. I don't see you have another tree around here that it looks the same tree. So we're, uh, we're blessed. Anyway, when I bought the cemetery in 2014, there, a lot of these graves were buried completely. I had to, you know, dig them out, bring them back to the earth. The monuments were rebuilt again. So to me, it was something that I think God direct me to maintain this cemetery. So this little spot right here, I'm gonna dedicate, I'm gonna present it to you. You're the owner of this spot that I like to dedicate to Vanessa Guillen, our angel in heaven with God. And it will be represent the love, the respect for all young people, people that are being killed, abused. They, they, they need to be loved. God loves everyone. Let's join God, be with Him all the time. So, para los padres de la familia, Vanessa, para tus padres. People here are pioneer people, first families, they're, you know, they sacrifice their lives and they're buried here. But they were forgotten for some reason. But now we're going to bring them back into our world, into our love. 